So some economists are calling for four rate hikes by the Bank of Canada. Some think it's going to be one or two. Uh, the central bank itself has signaled that the first hike could be coming March or April. But it's interesting because so many people are now saying, look, it's coming next week. Where do you stand? I don't think we'll see a, a raise next week. We're still in the middle of lockdowns. And the last time that we had lockdowns, we were slashing rates, not raising them. So I think that's I think there's a lot of um, people competing for headlines now, trying to one up each other with the more outrageous predictions. Uh, uh, Derek Holt at Scotiabank seems to keep upping his bet on the number of rate hikes we'll get this year. Every time other people come up to where he was previously, I think he's at seven now, seven quarter point hikes this yeah, year. So yeah. um, I, I think there's some headline clickbait competition going on. I'm not sure how accurate it will prove. I certainly don't think so. It, it'll be interesting, right? Because um, the central bank doesn't like or at least the markets don't like surprises from the central bank. And they seem to be communicating properly. But when you have a growing number saying they're going to have to pull the trigger next week, that actually could surprise the markets. Well, definitely the Bank of Canada is in, a, in an interesting quandary right now because yeah. they've been saying that they don't think they're going to raise until the middle quarters of, of this year. That's been their their, their press uh, commentary. That's what they said in their last monetary policy report. And the last time they, they, they spoke to markets officially in their last policy statement was in December. And they were positive about our economic prospects, about job growth. And, and the Omicron virus was at that point a concern, but... Um, the real impact hadn't yet materialized. So it would be very strange at the next uh, uh, formal communication of the Bank of Canada if um, after we've had um, a rash of uh, infection spikes, uh, hospitals are jammed, we've had lockdowns, um, uh, massive layoffs. Um, uh, I mean, all of the economic data going forward over the short term is going to turn negative and to be hiking into that environment when in December, when things look much more positive, the bank was still planning on waiting until the middle quarters of this year, it would certainly be strange. It would hurt their credibility. Now, there is one X factor here, and this is what the people who think we will see a Bank of Canada rate hike next week um, are, are citing repeatedly, and that is inflation expectations. The Bank of Canada has to be concerned if inflation expectations are going up then inflation be, can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. If people think prices are going to go up, whether they were or not, if they change their buying behavior and start buying today because they, they fear that prices in the future will be higher, then fear of inflation uh, begets actual inflation. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy or, or yeah. some would call it a self-reinforcing cycle. So that is the X factor here. Um, if the Bank of Canada is concerned about inflation expectations becoming, as they say, unanchored, uh, then maybe all bets are off and they have to go ahead. But based on all of their guidance and the fact that things have taken a turn for the worse economically since their last update, I would be very surprised if they hike uh, next week. David, they've also used um, well over a decade um, non-convention Nary, uh, monetary policy as a tool. And what I mean by that is quantitative easy, right? And buying bonds, um, flooding the market with liquidity. How does that factor in um, to managing inflation? And, and is that a tool that they can still lever? Uh, it's, it's still a tool. So um, quantitative easing uh, was used at the outset of the pandemic to try to give the economy every possible tailwind uh, uh, that that uh, for the bank wanted to try to give the economy every possible tailwind that it could. And so they started um, uh, buying bonds to lower, well, first to provide liquidity, and then eventually by creating extra demand for bonds, that lowered their yields as well. And because interest rates are priced off of bond yields, um, that caused interest rates to fall. Now, the Bank of Canada has already stopped its quantitative easing. They are no longer... Um, buying uh, incremental bonds in, in the market. Um, what they are doing now is they're in what's called a neutral position. And a neutral position means they've got bonds that are constantly coming up for renewal, existing bonds on their balance sheet. And they, if they didn't replace those bonds, if they allowed those bonds to simply roll off their portfolio, then that would actually be flooding the uh, bond market with more supply. Yeah. And because the bank can is no longer buying bonds, uh, that would actually cause yields to rise because 
before they were creating artificial demand to lower yields and interest rates. And if they allowed the bonds that were coming up for renewal on their balance sheet to roll off, they would then be increasing supply and withdrawing demand. And that would have the opposite effect. That would cause yields and rates to rise. So the Bank of Canada right now is in a neutral position. They're basically saying we are going to buy for every bond that rolls off our balance sheet, we are going to replace that bond by buying another bond and putting it on our balance sheet. So we're neither... Um, uh, we are neither contributing demand nor excess supply to the market. Now, if the Bank of Canada wanted to use quantitative easing to cause rates to go higher, they could allow bonds to roll off. That would then be a different phase than we're in now. But right now, they're in a neutral phase where their Q, their quantitative easing position is neither adding nor subtracting supplier demand from the market on okay. a net basis. David, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.